this video, I'll explain what standard errors are in linear regression. I'll explain how to calculate them using Excel. I've created a scatter plot in Microsoft Excel with this set of data. I've also performed regression, which has given me a table of statistics, including the standard errors. If you're not familiar with regression in Excel or adding a trend line to a scatter plot, let me briefly show you how to create those from a set of data. I've entered my X values in one column and my Y values in a second column. Highlight all of the data, click the Insert tab, and I'm going to choose a basic scatter plot. If you right click on a data point, it will give you some options. I'm going to choose trend line and add that R squared value. And I'm just going to tidy the chart up a bit by adding a couple of chart elements. I want a label for my X axis, a label for my Y axis, and I'm just going to give it a meaningful title. Next, I'm going to run a regression. Click the Data tab. If you don't see this button for data analysis, you need to load the Excel tool back. Click File, Options, Add-ins. Where it says Excel Add-ins, click Go. Make sure the tool pack box is checked, then click OK. And you should see that data analysis option. From there, choose Regression, click OK. I already have my input range values in. If you don't have them, you can just select the data. So there's my Y range, and you can do the same for the X range. For the output range, I want my data in the same worksheet, starting about there. Click OK, and there's our regression data, which includes the standard errors for the intercept. That particular standard error is for the slope. Next, let me add a couple more columns that are going to be useful for interpreting these standard errors. The first column is the predicted Y value. I'm going to take my equation for the regression line and plug in my X value. That gives me the predicted value for the first data point. If I grab the little square and drag it down. It will fill in the formula for the rest of the column. Next, I want my errors. The errors are the differences between the predicted and observed Y value. So if I subtract these two, I get my first error. And bringing that formula down to the bottom gives me the remaining errors. Finally, I'm going to remove the negative sign by squaring all of those values. Graphically, the error is the vertical distance between the fitted regression line and the observed Y values. If you were to add all of these up, that's called the residual sum of squares. And these squared errors are used in calculating the regression line through a minimization process for these sums of squares. The standard error itself is very similar to standard deviation. The standard error is a measure of dispersion for the sampling distribution for these coefficients. Every time you take a sample and perform regression analysis, you're going to get slightly different results. So what can we use the standard error for? One question we can answer with a standard error. Is the population intercept different from zero? In other words, is our coefficient of 9.014 a random fluctuation from that hypothesized zero? Excel has given us the t-statistic here, but here's how you would calculate it by hand. The t-statistic is the coefficient divided by the standard error. That gives us this standardized coefficient. We're about 2.9 standard errors from zero here. If we standardize that, we get about 3.1 standardized standard errors. We need to compare that to a t-critical value. You can look that up in a table. Or for this, I'm going to use Excel. Excel has a built-in function to look up t-critical values. It's the t-i-n-v function. I'm going to run the test at a 5% alpha level. 
I have 10 items in my sample, so I'm going to have to subtract 2 to get my degrees of freedom. That gives me a T critical value of 2.3, and as my T statistic is greater than my critical value, I can reject the null hypothesis that the intercept is 0. My intercept of 9 is statistically significant. You could also use the p-value method to come to the same conclusion. Both of our p-values are tiny. They are both much smaller than 5%, which tells us those coefficients are significant. I hope you found the video helpful. Please take a moment to subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.